everybody. We recap some of the action you saw in State Champs and State Champs Extra Point this weekend in week eight of the football season. This is the high school football weekend wrap up. Tom Markowski, Lauren Plant. So what we like to do first off is let's see how Tom did in predicting the future. So if you get a chance to watch the preview each week, which uh, airs later in the week, you'll see that Tom's pretty good at his job. He kind of knows what he's talking about. I had, uh, I did, I had Granville beaten Hudsonville, which they spanked him this week. Well, too. there you go. That's pretty good. Let's talk about, first off, Northville and Plymouth. So Northville wins at 23-20. Um, you took Northville, I took Plymouth just because I really thought it was such a toss-up game. And it turned out it that, turned way, out that way, way, too. Because Plymouth had the lead late in that, or in that fourth quarter. I did, you know, Northville just found a way to win. And I thought the comments, we, we had that one covered by one of our stringers. Mm -hmm. And I thought the comment by uh, uh, Sawchuck, the coach at uh, Plymouth, was right on the spot. He says, there's a reason they're 8-0 and, and we're 6-2. They didn't know how to finish that game. That's it. That's it. They didn't know how to finish. Uh, massive game for OK Black bragging rights that we had. It was the main event on State Champs. If you saw it, you can watch it right here on the YouTube channel if you didn't get a chance to see it. Uh, Muskegon and Mona Shores, we both got that one wrong. We thought that Muskegon was going to pull that one out. Instead, it's Mona Shores edging the Big Reds 21-18. You know, I bought the mail on that one. I'm talking to Shane Fairfield from Muskegon. I really thought they were on a roll yeah. after losing to Catholic Central. But I, I think I underestimated the defense of Mona Shores. And we talked we about that did. on the radio show, too, uh, about how good their defense is. After it. You know, we knew about their offense, you know, with people like Borsma and Travinger. But their defense is outstanding. I mean, they held them to three points for a long time. And even some of those points that uh, Muskegon got late in that game were, were you know, really weren't that important as far as the outcome of that game. No doubt. So, 21 to 18, yeah. but it really wasn't that close. Yeah, right. Uh, finally, Sterling Heights Stevenson at Dakota. We had talked about that one, the Mac Red uh, title. You took Dakota. Uh, I was playing devil's advocate. I took Stevenson because I thought, again, it was one of those games that uh, I thought maybe Stevenson was on a roll. Um, and it was a Cougars, though, who pulled it out 35-28 close game. Yeah, I mean, that it could have gone either way. Obviously, when you go overtime, and Stevenson had that lead late, late in the fourth quarter, and they let it get away. They had a uh, Dakota converted a second and 21 or a long pass to keep the drive going. They were stuck on their nine and they got a late touchdown and then they got the touchdown in overtime and, and Stevenson we had a big film a uh, good film clip of that of their quarterback uh, Desenzo yeah and I mean here's the goal line yeah. and he's like stopped I just know. like two inches short so I like Stevenson I was impressed by Stevenson the way they run the ball and the way they play defense they just uh, didn't have enough at the end yeah absolutely and we uh, we talked about how the fact that uh, they're trying to up the ante. They've got Catholic Central on Detroit Catholic Central on the schedule next season mm -hmm. for two-year contract. Two-year so, contract, right? So that'll be interesting. All right, a couple uh, more here. He has no idea who I'm going to throw at him. I love doing that. It's uh, something I love doing. I try to find some obscure ones, <laughs> uh, but games that we did have on state champs: uh, Capital Area Activities Blue Division game. Uh, Jackson beats Holt 63 to 41 this past weekend. Jackson gets win number six. Um, what do you think of that? Well, this week Holt is playing Grand Ledge, and I think uh, me, I was pointing to that game to be, you know, both teams tied for first. But I have kept an eye on Jackson this year, and I think they're somewhat of a sleeper team going into the state playoffs. They, that was a kind of a nip and tuck game, and they just blew out Ooh. Holt Ooh. in the late, late part of that game, scoring 63 points. I've uh, seen some of the highlights on state champs. That team's dangerous. There's a lot of athletes out there at Jackson, and they're a team. They play Lumen Christie this week, yeah. and to me, that's a, a, a gauge how well they can play against a well-disciplined team like Lumen Christie. Can they handle that thing? That and if they win that game, that would you know give them some momentum for the state playoffs. And so that's my next question. That looks like the way that uh, they are kind of being predicted in Division uh, um, One. One is a, a tough region with the likes of Portage Central and Fenton. Wow, they're going to If that they, happens, you I mean, you got shot. Fenton yeah. way up in Flint, and you're going to take Portis Central out of Kalamazoo and throw Jackson in the middle. Yeah. Well, we'll see how that works out. But no, see, I think Jackson has the advantage there because they have so much speed and athleticism. You, you take a team like Fenton and Portis Central or whatever, they don't see yeah. that type of game. And once in a while, out of a Battle Creek Central, uh, Portage might see that or Benton Harbor, but not nearly as well or m as many weapons that Jackson has. All right. Oak Park scores 44 unanswered points in the second half. Trounce is sound field 50 to 14. Uh, what do you think of that? Well, it's kind of a payback because last year Oak Park lost two close games to Southfield and and I think Southfield just, you know, when things start going bad, they get to, you know, it's like that uh, snowball effect going down the hill and that's what happened to Southfield. Uh, they're real young. Both teams are very young, but uh, um, 
I, you know, they got their quarterback back now, Oak Park. He was out, um, um, I think, uh, Loman, I think it is, uh, I'm, I'm struggling with That's the name right. here. And he was out mid-season. Mid they've won five straight. So, I know, Oak Park's on a roll, but unfortunately... They've got Clarkston. They've got Clarkston. And, no. Nobody did them any favors. So, if they end up 5-4, and four, do you think they get in? It's possible, because they picked up a lot of points beating teams like Southfield, who have five wins in their Class A school. I'd have to take a look at that. All right. That's a chance that they can get in. All right, and then finally there's U of D Jesuit. First win in the Catholic League Central Division since 2006. First win over Brother Ice since 2001, but we don't need to really believe it. Well, congratulations to Oscar Olenichek at uh, UD Jesuit. I right. mean, that's that's a big win. They got to beat uh, Redford Thurston. They got Redford Thurston. Thurston, two five and three teams going. Correct. This and you know, Oscar was telling me after the game, he says, "There's no way we're getting in at five and four. We know we have to win this game." And UD made the big plays. I, 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 you know, Brother Rice really had some things going in that game. A lot of penalties killed them. A simple offside and legal procedure penalties cost them. All right. So that is the wrap-up previews coming up. In just a couple of days.